thing, I like to use these uh, 3M radial discs. I buy these in bulk off of uh, Amazon. And what you do is you uh, stack three of these discs on a mandrel for your rotary tool. So you want these discs with the fingers facing to the right, as you see. These yellow discs are 80 grit. I used to use 220 grit and even 150 grit, but I found that I don't need to do that. I can use the 80 grit and just vary the pressure as I'm sanding. These are great for getting into small details without destroying the details. So you put them on your mandrel, tighten it up. I like to use a flex shaft. Gives me a lot more control over sanding. And you tighten that up. And we'll turn this on. And this will get into every little nook and cranny. It goes pretty quick. You can see it's retaining the detail, but it's getting out all the uh, little fuzzies that are in the crevices of the details. You just make a few passes over your piece, inspect it, and then go over it wherever is needed. These will last through about four or five projects, depending on the size and depending how much detail you have to get rid of. Excuse me, not the detail you want to get rid of, the fuzzies you want to get rid of. like close up okay once you've done your uh, final sanding you want to test fit the clock insert to make sure that it's gonna slide in there all right yeah, that's a snug fit it's not too tight you want to allow a little bit in case any finish gets in here but uh, these are adjustable you can bend these these out it's just a friction fit so that fits nicely if you do find it's too tight, then just take this over to your spindle sander and you know, sand the inside there, or you can hand sand with some uh, rough sandpaper, make a quick job out of it until you get the fit that you need. Okay, it's time to put the first coat of stain on. I'm using a uh, Rust-Oleum driftwood color, and I'm going to do that overall. And then after it dries, I'll come back and I'll use a couple different color stains over the top just to uh, make the wood look aged and to enhance some of the details. So we'll start with just uh, applying this uh, driftwood stain all over. Okay, I'll just wipe it all off. All the excess. Okay, I'm not too concerned about absolute full coverage, but uh, we want to get some coverage here as this is our base coat, and we'll be applying the different color stains over the top of that to complete that sort of rustic weathered fence or slat look okay so we'll just let that dry this is uh, a rust oleum stain that on the can says it dries in about an hour I uh, usually set this in front of a fan and under a, a lamp 
just kind of speed up the process and and I, I can recoat in about an hour just like the can says so all right we'll let that dry and we'll come back a little later I'll often want to speed up the process uh, for drying between coats of whether stain or clear coats or uh, sealers what have you so I've gone ahead and set this under a, a small lamp and at the same time I've got a, a small fan just blowing air across it that really helps speed up the drying process and so I've done that with this uh, piece of the uh, first coat of the driftwood stain so in about an hour this should be ready to recoat over with some various colors of stain uh, to give that more of a weathered slat look for this cloth. All right, to give this sort of a distressed, old, uh, weathered look, I've got uh, just a bunch of old brushes that I keep. You know, these are disposable brushes, but I keep a few of these on hand just for the purpose of distressing and antiquing. Didn't bother cleaning them off, so they're sort of stiff bristled, and that's exactly what I want. So I got these brushes here, I'll have some rags. Then I've chosen uh, a couple different uh, stain colors just to kind of put over this and see how it goes and I'll wipe it and brush it, distress it as we go. You never know quite exactly how it's going to turn out, but uh, it's sort of an iterative process that uh, you just go along until it looks good to you. All right, so let me just pick out uh, a couple stains. I've got wheat, Rust-Oleum wheat, and some golden mahogany. Got a couple other waiting in the wings just in case I decide to use them. And I'm going to start with this wheat color. And we'll just put a little bit of this uh, wheat on one of these slats here. I'm going to save the darkest color for last because that's the one that I want to uh, work into the crevices and bring out the details of the weathered grain. this color. Doesn't matter what this color is going to be. It'll be hidden by the clock insert. I'm going to slap some of this wheat on here. And let me get a rag to wipe some of that off before it that's up too much. Okay. And let me get some of that a uh, little bit darker color. Work that in. This one is the golden mahogany. this up on here just sort of give it some highlights and weathered look there let's wipe that down a little bit some of this wheat stain in the 
backside. some on the edges. Let me touch that up a little bit. Just adding a little bit of uh, modeledness to this wood. Just stippling the brush on here and there. Just give it that more of an old look. softer brush here that I just kind of smoothed that out a little bit with. Yeah, that's beginning to look a little like uh, aged slats there. And we'll let that dry and uh, then we'll come back with the final darker color stain to get into these crevices. You actually could use uh, acrylic paint as well. Either way, I'll get the same effect. If you use uh, acrylic paint, I, I would wait for this to dry and uh, spritz it with uh, two or three light coats of an acrylic clear, spray clear, and allow that to dry, then put your uh, acrylic uh, paints over that and uh, apply with a brush and wipe it off in sort of a glazing effect. So I can be done with either stain or acrylic paint, either one, your choice. Okay, we'll let that dry. We'll come back in a, in a few and finish it up. Okay, the uh, first coats of stain are dry, and I'm going to give it a little spritz of uh, Krylon Crystal Clear Flat uh, Clear Spray. Just to seal this off a little bit, I'm doing the back side first. Then I'll flip it over and do the front side. Okay, we've got our slat clock, and uh, it's got the first few coats. Remember, we put on the driftwood 
stain first. That was sort of our base coat. And then put on the Rust-Oleum Wheat color and the Rust-Oleum Golden Mahogany color. Now we're ready to put on the darkest color to enhance the details of the grain texture in our slat cloth. I'm going to be using a brand new brush this time. I'm just getting rid of these. If there's any loose bristles there. And I'm going to go with a uh, stain by Rust-Oleum called Carrington. It's a very, very, very dark, deep uh, brown color. As I mentioned before, you can use acrylic paint if you wanted to. You could use a dark brown or whatever color brown you want, acrylic paint instead. Now what I did after I put on the three uh, coats of stain, I did put a light misting of uh, Rust-Oleum flat just to sort of seal everything there. And that'll make it easier because this is going to be more of a glaze technique. Brush it on, wipe it off, uh, maybe brush in some more to sort of work in uh, overall. So I'll, I'll uh, do the back side first and get that over with and then we'll turn it over and finish up the front and then the final wiping down. And just working the brush in those crevice areas where it's hard to get with a rag. wipe most of this off. Again, this is more of a glazing technique than a staining technique, really. See, I'm being quite aggressive about wiping this, this off. And I'll get one of my stiff bristle brushes just to kind of dig out the residues in these corners. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, that looks pretty uh, distressed and worn, like it's old, old lumber. Just step a little bit along the edge there. All right, I think the back's good enough there. I'll flip it over and do the front. I'm just working it into the grain texture here a little bit, and I'm gonna wipe this off right now. 
before I go to the next slat. And I want to leave some of that dark in there. As you can see, it sort of enhances the grain texture that we have there. I want to do the next one. both shorter ones, so I'll go ahead and do both. dry brush, a stiff bristle brush, and just sort of enhance this a little bit to make it slightly different shade than the one next to it. And we've got a knot right here, so I'm going to darken that a little bit. doesn't really matter because the clock will be covering it up. But we'll do that anyway. tones there. Let's see if we can dry brush just a little bit more. About there. I'm going to darken these grooves here and there. brush. Okay. I think I'll stop and let that dry a little bit and take another look at it after it's dry and see if there's any other distressing I want to do to it. I may want to do some spatters. You know, I think I'll go ahead and just do some spatters right now just to show you how to do it. Well, you probably know how to do it, but I'll show you anyway. Can I just make a little puddle of stain in the, the can cap here? I take my stiff brush and just Flick my finger on it. And that'll give little splatters of wormholes, simulated wormholes, just general distressing. Let me get a little bit more here. Toothbrush works great for this too. probably can't see this too well on the video, but it's uh, putting minute little spots here and there. I can get more aggressive and actually just tap the brush like this. That gives us our 
bigger wormholes. I think I'll leave that alone and let that dry. Now, all right, this is the final clear coats. I'm using a Krylon acrylic clear spray flat. Of course, use the one of your choice if you like a satin or a gloss. I've already done the back side and the opposite side so we'll let that dry and then we'll put on a couple finishing touches and put in the insert thought it might be kind of fun to uh, take some of these carpet tack nails and pound them in the top and bottom of each of the four slats on the the clock just to make it look like it's you know maybe some old slats on a fence or something and i thought i'd just uh, scratch the nail heads a bit with some coarse sandpaper so I need to do 16 of these. I think I'll do a couple extra just in case I drop one or lose one or something. All right, so I'll finish this up and then we'll come back and pound these in the clock slats and install the rear hanger and finish it up. Okay, I'm gonna pound some of these carpet nails into the slats here and I'm just using a scrap piece of lumber just to kind of Give, kind of give me a guide. Uh, I don't want them perfectly even in an even line. I want to vary it a little bit. And uh, just place this right here. Using the spacer as my guide. There's basically four slats here, so I'm putting two in each slat. And purposely keeping these out of alignment. I was pounding while I was talking. I don't know if you heard me, but you could leave them part way out if you want or nail them all the way in, your choice. Okay, we'll flip this over and install the picture hanger. All right, we're ready to install the picture hanger. It's just a standard sawtooth picture hanger. I'm going to place it centered in the pocket here. And just to make it a little bit easier to get the nails in the right spot, we'll use an awl to create some starter holes for the nails. These nails are pretty small, so a pair of tweezers might be helpful to get that positioned. Okay, and I'll use a nail punch to drive that nail home. Okay, we got the hanger mounted. This gives you a little extra room to find the nail and then if it's a nail with a nail head on it this will give you some room for the nail head too so basically all you need to do is to drive a screw or a nail pound a nail into a wall and just hang this over it and last but not least insert the clock 
to finish the project.